while Callus worked on breaking through the Veil's defenses, we change our line of attack, as stopping him at this point is not very likely. However, if we instead destroy the weapon he intends to use to annihilate the Veil, we will have completed our job, even if it's through a roundabout way. Light bear, you have a dangerous mission ahead of you. Storming Callus' stronghold won't be easy. Normally I'd have more intel before a direct attack. The Guardian has faced the unknown and prevailed every time. They are equal to the task. The radial mast is somewhere in Callus' ship. If you strike swiftly, we can remove it as a threat before it ever reaches the Veil. Enter Callus' fortress, find the radial mast, and destroy it. Rohan warns us about the dangers of storming Callus' fortress and is uneasy about us commenting forward with such limited intel. Osiris is familiar with our game though and knows that we got the sauce. The trek to Callus' ship is not short though. Luckily, the view on the way there is fantastic. Once again, I must give kudos to the developers at Bungie who were able to realize such fantastical sights. This walk also solves some of my previous issues of the streets feeling eerily empty. I find my way to Umza Park. Staying within the lines has never been something I've been particularly good at and thus I walked right past the first campaign banner. This meant I started off with all of my cooldowns except my super. This didn't end up mattering though. You all should be familiar with the Cabal and their enemy types at this point so I will spare you the narration of my basic combat abilities. The goal is simply to enter the ship, and there are no special mechanics associated with doing so. This is fine. Different encounters serve different needs. I don't want to sell this encounter short though, just because there is none of that here, as there was one moment that truly tested my skills. I engaged with a fortress ship gatekeeper. I took it down to half HP, but have to reload my grenade launcher. This exposes a timing in where I am completely defenseless due to the surrounding ads. The gatekeeper takes advantage of this opportunity to blast me back. Being booped into the air away from any sort of ground is a death sentence for most warlocks. I, however, am just built different, and thus I stayed calm, cool, and collected. There was not even a trace of doubt within my intentions. I analyzed the area. In front of me, there was a ledge that jutted out from the bridge. I was not in the air, which meant I had not initiated the jump. Thus, for what feels like the first time ever, the glide from the Warlock Jump was useful and allowed me to save myself. Unironically, this has to be one of my greatest gameplay moments. This is also what we call foreshadowing. Rohan contacts me after I kill the gatekeepers and makes a brilliant guess. If Kallus is smart, the strongest members of Kallus' army are probably guarding this super important weapon. Surely we are dealing with only 300 IQ individuals. You can join this exclusive group by clicking that like button. After that bit of genius, our ghost analyzes the energy shield in front of us. We disrupt the circuit by shooting one of the floating keys. The witness granted Callus Black Fleet technology, and its influences are quite apparent as we continue in through the gaudy rooms. There's something strange here too. A powerful concentration of light energy? Something's not right here. Wait, a source of paracausal energy? It could be the radial mass. We run into a dead end. The only way to continue is to descend in the early pink lit drop zone. With this, we have officially entered the Typhon Imperator. The Shadow Legion have the corridor locked down tight. Even if we could fight through, they'd have enough time to secure the radial mast. There must be more than one path to the radial mast. Stand by. I'll send you all the sensor scans we have. You want them to take an indirect route? We can ill afford to waste time. The view is astounding thanks to the giant statues in the background. But Osiris' conclusion is a bit odd. He isn't an absolute moron and should understand why we have to find another path, especially since Rohan just noted the problems with taking the primary route. This seems like plain mischaracterization and a missed opportunity for Osiris to have said something more useful. Regardless, I ended up getting stuck behind a statue and struggled to escape. This was a major waste of time once I remembered the best way out. 
Guardian, do you see that? It's more of that strange darkness energy. What is it doing here? The next room has a few war beasts, but the main attraction is the golden statues and ornate decorations. I make my way onto the next floor, but a turret jump scared me. My Virgloss curve creates a wall of ice and blocks off the attacks as I plant my feet onto the ground. I destroyed the machinery before continuing on. This is where I once again saw some clusters of green strands. Although the rooms are decadent, we found ourselves facing a dead end. Osiris is critical of our deviation from the direct path, but he still hasn't acknowledged the reason we're finding an alternative in the first place. After a bit of platforming, we enter another grand room. The centerpiece being a golden statue of Callus himself. The Shadow Legion must use this grab lift to move equipment and troops across the ship. It should take us deeper in. I still can't believe my sensors. Could the radial mast really be a light artifact? There's still a great deal we don't know. What is the radial mast capable of? How will it affect the veil? And what is the witness planning? All very good questions, but ones that can wait until we destroy the radial mast and saved your city. I know what's at stake here, Osiris. The gravity lift is a neat movement system. However, they appear to only transport you one way, which seems like a major inconvenience for any sort of prolonged use. For some reason, the fact that the radial mast might be a light artifact rattles our ghosts. Rohan then asks questions that we already know the answers to. Based on Kallus' words from earlier, the radial mast is an artifact that will destroy the veil. This answers questions 1 and 2. The witness is planning on killing the Traveler and ending all life and soul. Pikachu shock face. This makes the bickering between Osiris and Rohan a waste of time. I crack open the next door and place down the second campaign banner before entering the rather large siege hangar. The Shadow Legion are ready for a siege alright. Just look at all these ships. Kallus is ready to annihilate this city. Those ships reach the cryopods. Casualties would be devastating. Hey, I bet we could help with that. Overloading those energy conduits should do the trick. If we are able to overload the energy conduits, we can destroy most of these advanced vehicles. Dropping into the middle of the room starts the encounter, but of course, I wrap myself into a corner right after. There aren't that many enemies, so I don't really have to stay stuck for any period of time. I drop down a turret on the energy conduit before finishing off the scion behind me. The stasis crystals from my bow secured the plate in a rather trivial manner. Shadow Legion troops continued their assault, but I managed to conjure the required resonance. I super cleared the odds that prevented me from grabbing the orb. Our ghost and Rohan have a rather useless exchange, but I guess it's generic combat banter. I assumed that the one across would have been simple. However, the new batch of reinforcements prevented this. I picked off some of the more annoying enemies before grabbing the Dark Resonance and depositing it into the conduit. Ha! Take that! Rohan, you've got fewer ships to worry about now. An improvised distraction. But an effective one. And the people of Neomona will be safer. At least for now. Tormentor, up high. I looked up, and the Tormentor was indeed up high. Thanks to the lighting, the Tormentor's descent is also quite cinematic. My grenade hit the Tormentor directly. I intended for this to create a turret, but apparently I didn't hold it for long enough. Not only that, but the Tormentor then decided to jump over the crystals from my Burglass curve. At the time, I still hadn't realized I had not created a turret. That's why I tossed my second close up grenade instead of spawning what I would be another turret. In action, which would have been fine, but no, instead, my nade clips through the tormentor's leg and lands behind it, depriving me of my grenade energy. Luckily, I still had a few more tricks up my sleeve, and one of them was freezing the tormentor with my penumbral blast. I then executed my typical damage rotation. Unfortunately, the timing of when I hit the Tormentor with my primary was off, and thus, Bane Switch failed to proc. 
Luckily, some scions showed up. While normally they would increase this fight's difficulty, I was instead able to form some more hail barrage stacks from them. These arrows allowed me to slow down the Tormentor with both the physical stasis crystals and the slow down debuff of the Knot Ice. I managed to hold my trigger finger and did not fire the second rocket, preserving my life in the process. After that, I just ran around the arena and waited for my ability cooldowns to warm back up. With the Tormentor dead, I completed the second encounter and claimed my loot. Are you at the radial mast yet? No, but we're getting closer. I can sense it. Good, good. They haven't moved it yet. There's still some time. Focus on the path ahead of you, Guardian. You're almost there. We inform Rohan that we are not there yet. Osari sounds less annoyed than before, though, and a more tripper attitude to let us know that the radial mast is still intact. I wonder what caused this mood change or if Osiris realized that our plan was fine all along with this new information. I take another gravity lift. This one seems a lot less safe than the previous one, especially with how it awkwardly pushed me forward when I reached the next level. It's strange. I thought as we got further in, we'd see more of the old callus. But this, how much has the witness changed him? After opening the door ahead of me, I opened the next room's door from the bottom floor. Even though there's a timer involved with this mechanic. Yeah, I, uh, I didn't really think that one through, huh? This ship has had its fair share of interesting rooms, and this one is up there thanks to its walls. To me, these red gems contain crystallized Shadow Legion army soldiers. Our ghost notes Osiris' recent struggles and how they have negatively impacted his emotional state. However, he is unable to figure out how Osiris. we could possibly help him. But I'm also not what sure what to do about him at all. We can do Besides saying the obvious though, I think for now, Osiris would appreciate it if we head towards the radial mast. If my angles are right, this grab lift is a straight shot to the radial mast. We're almost there. You have overcome every obstacle so far, Guardian. Do not falter now. We find more Cabal crystals and our ghost confirms my previous theory. This leads us to a smaller room. I stare at the floor pattern on the ground as it reminds me of the artifact on Mars. Something's wrong. The door just opened for us. I have a bad feeling. Be vigilant. I placed on the campaign banner and began the third encounter. That monument must be the radial mass. There's no mistaking it. That's light energy radiating from it. Oh no. Guardian, welcome. So good to hope to be tonight's entertainment. Let us reach the heights of glorious combat together. Ignore Callus's globiating. This is your chance. Destroy the radial mast. So you've come for this meager trinket. It is the very least of the witness's gifts. A mere glimpse of the power it can bestow. Even the best contender's performance grows insipid without a worthy opponent. <laughs> Wouldn't you agree? While hunted us, I struggled against the defending Shadow Legion forces. This included me fending off the ads while capturing a plate that then spawned in a dark resonance. Thanks to the previous encounter, I was familiar with how this mechanic worked. However, 
While the arena in that fight was medium-sized, there were basically no enemies. This area is much larger and grander in scope. In the middle of the room, there's a large obelisk that I can safely assume to be the radial mast. Below it, there's a purple aura which I can also safely assume to be emitting from the veil. While not directly stated, from the setup of this encounter, I can make a few more assumptions. Since we are above where the veil is, I realized that the veil was much larger than what I first assumed. With how the mechanic of this fight involves us trying to stop the radial mast from gathering enough energy, I am then led to believe that the radial mast is some sort of high power, precision, laser or drill, slash weapon, meant to strike at the core of a much larger object. For some reason, I drop down from the high ground and just expose myself to multiple angles. This forces me to take a bunch of unnecessary damage and thus I die. Well, this is my second death overall in this mission. Just remember how my first death went. I don't think this level has been meaningfully easier than any particular past mission, though. I think I've just gotten better at not killing myself. Also, there are no cabal enemies that rush you down and blow up in your face. Besides, based on how I died immediately the second time around in this fight, I could still find a meaningful challenge at the very least. Since I knew how this encounter would start off, I can prepare better the third time around. This allowed me to capture the plate before Callus finished blobbering. I also did not run it down. Instead, I plopped a turret next to the radial mass while I maintained the high ground. This made slaughtering the Centurions and Karul, indomitable champion, a complete walk in the park. I ran along the sides of the arena, but grabbing the dark resonance from its isolated platform forced me to drop down. While I had the orb in hand, I had to drop it when I placed down my healing rift because every single cabal enemy decided to lock in at that exact moment. My Virgloss curve has some hail barrage stacks, and thus I was able to conjure enough stasis crystals to wall me off. I seized the opportunity and jumped to the level above me. The Shadow Legion troop up here forced me to use my super in order to live, but this granted me the opportunity to grab the Dark Resonance orb and then deliver it to its respective conduit. With that, I completed the first half of this encounter. Do you think you understand power? <laughs> Come and show me all you have learned. Now I just had to do all of that over again. And now I to a pack of war beasts. Whoops. I underestimated their damage output, especially since I was already regaining health from my healing rift. If I froze them with my melee or grenade, I probably would have lived. All right, I had to shake it up my fourth time around. Somehow I get a sneak it rocket into Karul, but for some reason, I then decided to launch another rocket into him and turn around instead of just going fast and grabbing the resonance. Even though that whole run was a mistake, I learned from my errors and refined the process. I played it safe in the capture stage, but after grabbing the dark resonance, I decided to take a more direct route and cut through the radial mast instead of sticking to the ring's perimeter. The moment I charged the conduit, I moved. I needed to capture one more point, and I knew where it was since I was spatially aware of where the previous plate was. With my super up, I went ahead and used it in order to secure the location and to spawn in the second orb. I took the time to secure the location and that allowed me to grab the dark resonance and make a mostly smooth run to the second conduit. With the radiance mast overcharged, all I had to do now was clear the remaining ads. Our ghost spots a darkness anomaly. We look within and become strained and powered. With these abilities, it becomes clear to me that this arena was designed for Strand. Unfortunately, these powers don't last too long. Guardian? Guardian? Not now! Now it will be true power! What could have been yours if only you had accepted my generous offer? You cannot escape fate and oblivion. Embrace your end. Let's go. 
going on? Hang on, I'm getting a transmission. It's uh, a set of coordinates inside this arena. With only Valvo Curl hovering in the middle of the arena, getting to the coordinates was eerily easy. Is this the extent of your prey? Is this all the traveler's chosen guardians can muster? <laughs> Guardian, your recklessness will be the end of you one day. But not today. Daughter, traitor, have you come to disappoint me one last time? We'll, uh, just show ourselves out. Is it done? Have you destroyed the radial mast? We can't. The whole ship is coming down on top of us. We have to go. We were too late once already. And Callus was able to secure the veil. Now the radial mass? Headlong and empty handed, Osiris. If you fight the river, it'll sweep you away. I die seconds after the dialogue and so some absolute BS. Like, really? Every enemy just so happened to hit me at the exact same time and caused me to be ejected from my sparrow and then killed with such force that my body replicates the ragdoll experience of when you get hit by a giant in Skyrim? Like, seriously? <sighs> Whatever. <sighs> Kaido is apparently bringing the entire ship down with her assault. So, while we might not be destroying the radial mass directly, the final result might not be so dissimilar. Kaido's appearance signifies a powerful force joining us on Neomuna, and one that is related and directly opposed to Kallus. Her appearance now is perfect, and presents the story with an excellent direction to head. Without Kaido, Kallus was just another bad guy to me especially since I had not experienced any of his story moments. Now, there was someone who I've heard of previously and could finally meet. This presentable force opposed to Kallus was on our side and made this encounter against him more relevant and meaningful in this moment. Surely this conflict will become the primary driving force of the tension and drama in this story. I speed towards the exit's light. The unstable terrain, along with my reckless driving, causes me to bounce off and fall into the void. However, I cleared the checkpoint and so this cute oopsie does not transform into a suicide inducing blunder. Don't be fooled by his act. The callous you face is no almighty emperor, but something far more dangerous. A hungry, desperate beast. Once the Cabal Empire and all its bounty was his to command and his to consume. Joy was his purpose and his strength, he said. To angst over edicts and enemies was weakness. But I could see in his eyes dread that his pleasures would soon come to an end, clouding his sight from an incoming coup. I should have killed him then, but I thought exile more fitting. I thought he'd shriveled to nothing in the void of space. Instead, he caught a glimpse of something more, the chance to become greater than he'd ever been, like a war beast after a blood set. He chased that chance, abandoning all honor, reason. There was nothing he would not sacrifice for his own salvation. And when the witness came to him at last, Callus faced what he had run from all along. If we don't stop him, he'll make sure it's the end for us all. Kaido's recap of Kallus' life might not have been a full-on 3D render, but that doesn't stop it from being among one of the best cutscenes I've seen. These 2D cutout cutscenes explore an animation space that is much more artistic and thus interesting to me 
than some of the more highly polished renders of otherwise basic events. Unfortunately, substance-wise, I don't have anything to add as this was a pure learning moment. We spawn in at Strider's gate and have to run all the way inside. This is where I hear someone, called Saint-14, talking with Osiris. Empress Keigel's forces will help push back Kallus' advances. We've done nothing but waste time! I understand. But I cannot lose you again in your eagerness to fight. It is not the same as before. I am contemplating your most recent outburst with Strand to see if there are opportunities for improvement. It was out of control. We did the best we could. We need to do better! We don't know what Callus and the Witness want, but if it will have an effect on us all... I, I, I can't allow that to happen. I must ponder more on these strands. You should consult with the Cloud Striders to consider what our next steps could be. Osiris. I'm fine, Ghost. I'll be fine. Go on. He's upset at our recent performance with Strand. And Go since on. we collapsed right after wielding it for only a short amount of time, this ire isn't exactly unwarranted. While the gameplay matches up with the story, and thus there isn't too much little narrative distance here, it feels kind of weak because losing that power wasn't exactly in our control. Thus, when Osiris chastises me, I feel annoyed at his words and tone due to the error being forced upon me and not have actually been within my control. If only Ghost didn't throw the conversation and dismiss our efforts by saying we did the best we could. To add on to that annoyance, we have to run all the way back to Strider's Gate to talk to Nimbus. This took long enough that fast traveling might unironically be faster. That Kaido. Oof. She's something else, huh? Well, look, I was rooting for us. Really, I was. There's no greater joy for me than doing something Rohan would call incredibly reckless. He'll shake his head and say his little catchphrase. Nimbus, headlong and empty-handed. I'm sure you heard it. It's shorthand for, hey kid, stop trying to do it all yourself. We're partners for a reason. And if I screw up and things go south, well, we'll fix them together. The Cloud Arc is still vulnerable. If we can cycle the power, a hard reset like that should kick things back into gear. It's just... This hard reset is deep in Vex territory, and that's where you come in. Osiris and Rohan can go process their differences over some fermented tea or whatever. We're off to go protect the people of Neomuna. Nimbus's carefree attitude is a stark contrast to every other character I've encountered in Destiny, aside from, like, Finch, which is interesting, I guess. I mean, it's not really interesting, it's more like a statement. Yumina seems to have been relatively peaceful aside from maybe the Vex until Kallus arrived. But Rohan and Nimbus also don't really seem to know why the Witness is a threat, let alone who they even are. This makes sense since Nimbus is portrayed as a much younger character. We just got Rohan, and since he was paired with Osiris, we definitely do not need another straight man. Aside from their dude bro tone, nothing they've said so far has been egregious. Rohan's catchphrase is pretty stupid though. Nimbus redirects our attention towards protecting the Cloud Arc as it's now under attack from the Vex. This break from the Cabal should serve in diversifying the gameplay. The only thing Nimbus doesn't do is address the after effects of the mission. This leaves me a tad confused on the state of affairs. And so I'm hoping that Osiris and Rohan will catch me up. Of course, this involves me wasting time by running all the way back inside into the Hall of Heroes. Like, seriously? Why not just move Nimbus inside with the rest of them instead of wasting our time with this? These are precarious times. 
I came to see an end to Callus once and for all. But, and I say this with considerable restraint, we are not ready. I've witnessed a great many patriarch of the Cabal Empire poisoned by obsession. Gaul with the light, Callus with the darkness. I worry for Osiris. Recklessness can manifest into obsession. He must rein in his tempestuousness to hope to defeat Callus. So in war, the way is to avoid what is strong and strike at what is weak. Thankfully, Kaido landed and joined up with the rest of the crew. Her words convey a concern for us and Osiris. We cannot underestimate Callus, and in that manner, we cannot act recklessly. Osiris is barely under some sort of distress, and thus he must somehow clear his head before we can proceed. We then listen to a recorded message between Osiris and Nimbus. Hey, uh, I have a message here from your vanguard's commander Zavala asking about you. He's probably attempting to check in on my physical and psychological status. You do that kind of thing often? He and Saint and Ikora are concerned for my safety. If no longer carrying the life I did, has transformed me instantly into a fragile elder. Sounds like they care about you, old bird. It's your room to be stuck with supportive friends, huh? I imagine from your perspective, I must say. Perhaps because Nimbus is a new face and has such a carefree attitude, Osiris opens up a bit and is able to take heed of Nimbus's reminder that people care about him and that he should take a moment to breathe, which is generally decent advice. I wish we saw some more interactions between Nimbus and Osiris before this though, as that would aid in making this feel less like it came out of nowhere. After that is when I realized that the weird floating static in the overworld represents the new Moonian people in the Cloud Arc. Interacting with the hollow projector outside grants me with a quick silver storm catalyst before playing a message from Marasov. Overall, this mission was a cut above. Everything from the park outside to the alien insides of the ship itself was outstanding in its physical location and mission design. The visuals inside the ship match the grandiosity presented to us by the face of Callus on the outside as well. A major success as it matched Callus's vibes to a team. Starting off mechanically simple with nothing in the first encounter and then introducing the resonance and conduit in the second showcased the influence of the complexity of the darkness even further. The tormentor to cap it off was also fun. The third encounter stepping it up a notch by increasing the scale while doubling the conduit mechanic was the perfect bump in difficulty. However, I wish we got another tormentor fight here as one of those tracing us down would make camping one spot a less viable option. Kaido coming to the rescue was a great introduction to her. The escape sequence at the end though was definitely the weakest one so far. Visually, it looked like an unfinished mess, so a step back from Shadow Keep. And design-wise, we just went in a straight line, so a step back from the Witch Queen. Also, while I returned to the Watchtower, the status of the radial mast and the veil are still unknown to me. I assume that Kaido destroyed the ship from the outside, but I've gotten no confirmation since no one has even talked about it. Nimbus saying we need to protect the Cloud Arc in order to protect the Veil is the only clue I have to work on, assuming that the Veil is still safe. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers, so if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you could hit that button. I have a ton of content on my channel. Thanks for watching.